Hi, I'm Claire. And I'm Isaac. And we are back. Feels like we never left. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> For the new welcome series, which is Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine. Um, what is Site Engine? Well, in the briefest of explanations, it's a network management system. It's a lot more than that, but that's what it is. We're going to get there, yeah. And we're hoping to explain this to you in three episodes, hopefully, fingers crossed. Yes. So what will we be covering in episode one? So the one is, what's a world without Site Engine for a network administrator? What does that look like? And then the other one is, what does a world with Site Engine look like for a network administrator? And you'll see it makes a big difference. It's going to be better, I think. Oh, yeah. So does anyone need to um, know anything about Site Engine before they watch this? No, the welcome series is really open to everybody. You know, you don't have to be in tech, you don't have to know bits and bytes. Just come along, just watch, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it, exactly. And a friendly reminder, guys, that uh, there's a certification exam for this course. So if you stay tuned to the end, uh, that's where I'll be explaining how you gain access to our portal um, and the exam and can get yourself a free certification. There you go. Put it onto your CV, put it onto your LinkedIn profile. Way to go. Share your achievements, exactly. Should we get going? We should. Let's do it. Let's go. Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine. What an interesting name for a product. It's, it hasn't always been called that name. Previously, it used to be called XMC or Extreme Management Center. And that's exactly what it is. It's a place, a center for network management. It is an element, an extension of Extreme Cloud IQ. It can work on its own or it can work in conjunction with Extreme Cloud IQ. But in the following modules, we will expand that. We will unpack that and see all the different configurations and setups that you can have with this great product. The job of a network administrator is essentially that, to manage networks. Now, networks comes in all sizes, all shapes, and small network, it's easy for one individual to manage. Larger networks, enterprise networks, it becomes a lot more difficult and certainly needs more than one person. You'd normally find a team of people addressing the network and managing the network. It's quite rare to find a network that is homogenous, that only uses one type of network devices. It happens, but not often. Just think about firewalls, for example. No network can survive without a firewall, especially if it's exposed to the internet today. Extreme Networks doesn't do that, but we partner with other companies who do. But that would mean that you would need one management system for the firewalls and another management system for extreme switches. But even then, on the networking level, it's very common to find mix and match. People buy uh, different equipment, legacy equipment that gets carried over and works. And you end up with a situation where you have many different management systems to cover all the equipment that you have. Wouldn't it be great if you could have a tool that could aggregate all of that into one single pane of glass? Just think about the financial impact of being able to see all your network end to end on one screen and you can manage, you can update, you can do everything that you would do on different systems from one consolidated central place. That would be great. That is Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine. So what does a world look like without a management tool, a management platform like Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine? Some of you have already experienced worlds like this. Let's take a look at the way you, we used to manage devices before these tools made their appearance. What is an unmanaged switch? Because we've been talking a lot and we do talk a lot about managed switches. There was a day, there was a time when companies used to make switches that had no manageability at all. What that meant was you simply plugged in network cables into the switch and the devices connected everything together. There was nothing to configure, nothing to set up, nothing to change. Unmanaged switches. Those days are long gone. What is a managed switch? What does a managed switch bring to the party though? 
it gives you the ability to configure things. For example, to create VLANs, to dedicate certain ports to certain uh, devices like printers by reserving a MAC address for that specific port. So you can see that there's many more examples, but a managed switch allows you to take this device and really extend it, extend the power of what it can do. Watch this. Ooh. On most switches, the management ports will be on the top left or on the top right, just depending on the density of the switch. You can then plug into that using a USB cable or on some of them serial cables um, using RJ45 connectors and on older devices, serial nine pin cables. That's how you connect to it so that you can manage it. So one of the connection methods is console to CLI where you connect your laptop, for example, into one of these, these management ports, and you're then going to use the command line interface to manage the switch. Does it work? Yes. Do most network administrators love this way of working? Yes. But it is slow if you're not highly competent with the operating system, and it is prone to making a lot of typos. Another method is to use Telnet to get to the command line interface. This is generally a bad idea because it is insecure. Now, of course, if you're sitting at home in your own home and you've got no connectivity to the outside world, feel free, it does work. But in an enterprise, don't use it. Stay away, turn off Telnet. This is not the way to go. The next method that we would use, the secure method would be to use SSH to get to the command line interface. The protocols that we would use to do this management would be simple network management protocol, SNMP. Ideally, you want to use SNMP version three. Of course, you might have to use SNMP one and two. They should be avoided, they are insecure, and sometimes you just can't get around it, right? Because you have legacy devices on your network, they still work, they still function, but they are not able to talk the latest language. These are the challenges, these are the methods that you would use if you didn't have a management tool. The final method to manage a switch or a series of switches would be through APIs, application programming interfaces. It's a little bit more complicated over here because here we're starting to talk about the knowledge of something like Python or scripting languages. Again, many network engineers are familiar with this nowadays and it's just part of the job. But a lot of people are not programmers. A lot of network engineers struggle in this area. And so it can be done, it's a lot more complicated. It is powerful, but it has its trade-offs. The first thing a network administrator needs to consider before using Site Engine is how exactly are you going to deploy it? This is really important. And for that, I'm going to go through the three deployment methods. Let's bring up the first one on screen. The first method is generally known as Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine on-prem. Now, what do we mean by on-prem? It could mean a number of different things. Not everybody who buys this product actually has an extreme based network or uses tools like Extreme Cloud IQ. You could be needing a management tool to manage devices that are, have nothing to do with Extreme. So on-prem would be locally, managing this on your infrastructure. Extreme Cloud IQ site engine is sold as a VM or a hypervisor, and so it would need to be installed on a machine on your premises, on a customer's premises. In that instance, we sometimes refer to it as an air-gapped solution. The reason we say that is because some companies have no desire to move into cloud management. They want all the management to be done on premises. And that could be because of government laws. It could be of the industry that you're in that requires all of the data to be kept and managed there. For that situation, Extreme Site Engine on-prem works 
absolutely perfectly. The second deployment option is a little bit more flexible. This is for companies who might not be ready right now to deploy and to have management in the cloud. So they want to purchase Site Engine, they want the power of Site Engine, the flexibility of Site Engine, but they'd like to know that at a later stage, should they be ready or when they are ready to go into Extreme Cloud IQ, manager of managers, the, the cloud version, and they can just flip a couple of switches and have the two systems working in collaboration with each other. That also opens up the world of other features that are not available on Site Engine. Current customers with Extreme Networks who've still got Extreme Management Center, there is a migration path. There is a way that they can migrate all their data without losing anything across into Site Engine as well. And again, they have those options of the first two deployment scenarios. Either they move it and migrate it into Site Engine and leave it there, or they migrated with the possibility or with the option of connecting it to Extreme Cloud IQ. In fact, the option to connect to Extreme Cloud IQ is always there. The customer makes the decision. The third option we have is where we connect both systems together. Extreme Cloud IQ on the one side and Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine on the other. This is really where you get the very best because Site Engine is going to handle all the analytics, it's going to handle extreme control, and it's also going to be able to manage third-party devices. Extreme Cloud IQ manages extreme networks devices, but then the power of the cloud gives you extra capabilities. Some of those capabilities that we have in place now are things like Digital Twin, where you can make an exact digital copy of your switching infrastructure, of your networking infrastructure. And at that point, you can then start playing around, changing the configuration of your switches, adding different features in if you want, to then see how your network reacts. If you're happy with that, you can then push that configuration back into your live environment. Think of it as a digital lab for your networking infrastructure. That's what Extreme Cloud IQ, the power of Extreme Cloud IQ, brings to this third solution, the best of both. The second thing is enabled simply by the pure power of the cloud, and that's the ability to do artificial intelligence, AI, and ML. Everybody knows that to be able to get good data for artificial intelligence, you have to have millions, if not billions, of data points. And extreme network devices send all of that information up to the cloud. And so the computing power of the cloud would then be able to analyze all of those data points and help network administrators by alerting them to anomalies, to issues on their systems well before they're even aware of it. We know from various articles that the growth of the network, the networking data for a network administrator is becoming bigger and bigger all the time. It's not going to go back. And networking administrators are simply going to be flooded over by the pure amount of data. Without artificial intelligence, a network administrator is not going to be able to run an efficient network. Network management systems like Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine, they introduced the GUI. And if you look at the comparison between the two over here, yes, you can do things with the command line, if you know your stuff, right? Some of these commands are really long, really complicated. On this side over here, you see the GUI. How much easier just to click one of these buttons and do the same thing? That doesn't mean there isn't a place for the command line. There is a place. Absolutely, there is a place. But what we're saying with the GUI is it makes it so much easier for somebody to manage, not necessarily a programmer or somebody with programming skills. So in this episode, we looked at the deployment models of Site Engine, and I hope that one of those tickles your fancy, that one of those is the one that you're going to go for. The important thing to note is you have a lot of options and flexibility. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.